Welcome to July. It's great to see you, and here we go. The rest of this year is going to be one filled with power and glory. And we are glad to be with you at Home Teams all across Broward County on this beautiful Tuesday evening in which you and I have gathered to come around the word of the Lord. And by that cause, we stand and forevermore will go forth. Our announcements for this month, this Friday is all church prayer. We will be back to our session of having two-hour segments in which we meet at the church and pray 8 to 10, 10 to 12, and so forth. It'll be a wonderful evening, getting us closer to the will and way of God. Also, next Wednesday, we'll be camp meeting. Uh, It's going to be held in Ocala, July 10th through 12th. If you are able, it'll be good for you to make it up there. It's always a great time to be with the people of God. Our text for this month, as we have continued a process of going through and learning about who Jesus is, it is important for us to get a grip on the fact that he is Lord and that there is no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It is through that name that we are saved. It is through that name that we are delivered. It is by that name that we are set free. Our text is found in the Gospel of John, which is one of the most dynamic and amazing parts of your Bible. In fact, it's contended by some that the book of John might be the very last book written. We know that he's the last writer in our Bible. We know he wrote the revelation of Jesus Christ uh, written by John on the island of Patmos, but also the gospel of John. It could be the most dynamic of all books in your Bible. It's as if the Lord wanted to make the end come forth with a great, great expression of who Jesus is. John 20, 31 is our text, and it says, These things are written so that you might believe that the Messiah, the Son of God, is Jesus, and that through believing you might have life in his name. Life in his name. I am concerned that there's an awful lot of folks in this day that have taken the name of Jesus and put it into a position where it has been belittled to be little more than a name that is spoken in vanity, a name that is spoken when it is not a time for prayer. And But we are a people built on the power of the name of Jesus. As we assess the Gospel of John, looking at our text, there is a point that I want to pull out from this book that is a study of this this phrase that is known in Greek as ego emi, which is the special and spectacular expression of Jesus saying, I'm not just here, I am not just somebody, but that I am the living God. And it is so important for us to understand that he is the living God, uh, because that's why when we baptize, we baptize into the name of of Jesus. We understand that when John wrote, there were some who said Jesus never really existed. Uh, he was writing around 90 AD, and it was near the very last session of when Jesus or, or the disciples were here. He also knew that there were those at that season that said Jesus was not a human, and they existed, uh, that, or they insisted that maybe he was uh, a phantom. And then there were others. Uh, that proclaimed that Jesus did exist, but he was just a man with divinity that was projected upon him by the disciples. In other words, the people around him thought so much about him that they decided that they would uh, make him seem as if he was bigger and greater than what he was. Into that kind of a world of chaos and various thought processes that John wrote his gospel. It was much later than Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote their gospels, and John did not write the same way they wrote. He wrote uh, no parables necessarily in his gospel writing, and when you read Matthew, Mark, and Luke, you're very, very accustomed to there being parables there. He also doesn't tell of the same miracles that Jesus spoke of. Uh, In fact, he doesn't call them miracles, even though they are miraculous. He refers to them as signs, signs. And so these signs, when he tells of them, he will give, the gospel of John gives the essence and the reason for 
the uh, telling of the miracle. For an example, the feeding of the 5,000, he tells us that Jesus is the bread of life. When Jesus heals the blind man, uh, Jesus explains, or, or John explains, that Jesus is the light of of the world. His explanation gives a certain amount of clarity and dimension to the gospel that is written by John. Two-thirds of his book was written um, about the last week of Jesus's life, and uh, a full one-third of his book is about the last 24 hours of Jesus's existence before the cross. Uh, it's amazing how he spent so much time focusing on this critical event called the cross and Calvary and that week that goes up to it. After 60 years of the death of Jesus having been passed, there was apparently a need for a complete record about what happened at the cross. Uh, what happened when they took Jesus up the hill, Golgotha? A whole generation had come and had and had arrived, uh, who were not eyewitnesses of the events of Jesus' death, and someone needed to write it down. John determined, I'm going to make sure it's written down what happened. John also wrote to account to counter a group uh, of people that were known as the Gnostics, G-N-O-S-T-I-C-E. Yes, the Gnostics. They determined that anything physical was evil. That was their mindset. If it was material, it was evil. Uh, and therefore, Jesus was not material, but he he was more or less a phantom that was in the area. John one spent a lot of time showing the physical exhaustions of Jesus in his book. That was unique. Uh, that's the reason John spends time telling us that Jesus ate, that he uh, slept, that he groaned when he prayed. Um, the spirit was troubled. John was the one who gave us the shortest verse in your Bible. Jesus wept, John eleven thirty five, 35. And, and all these things John was putting in there under the inspiration of the Holy Ghost. He did it because there was motive in his inspiration. He would not just do it to throw it in there to add color to the descriptions. There are six narratives in John's gospel that uh, feature women. This is another unique attribute to the gospel of John. John makes clear that if you're going to get Jesus, you must go beyond his humanity. You must first understand he was a human, that he will always be a man who came, but he was more than just a man. You cannot contemplate contemplate Jesus from the historical documents and know him. And that's why John included this, this Greek word, which uh, it was a very important to note that in the days of Jesus, most of the Hebrew or the Jews in that time read Greek because of the di diaspora and the time before Jesus, there had been a lot of spreading out. And so there were a lot of Grecian Jews, a lot of them that came back. The day of Pentecost is a mirror of that event. And so in the fourth century BC, they took the Hebrew Bible and rewrote it into the Greek. And in Jesus's day, this edition, was the most popular and most read. In fact, it is the most quoted in your New Testament. If you did know Greek, you can tell the, the nuances uh, different between the Hebrew and the Greek and that which made the Greek, that uh, Septuagint part, it came forth and it is shown in the writings of our New Testament. Testament. Uh, but in the Gospel of John, here's what's so stunning about the Gospel of John. I have here in my hand a book. It's called The Comparative First Century Aramaic Bible in Plain English. And it's set beside the King James Version uh, of the Bible. But as I love this book, it, they took a first century Aramaic Bible uh, and put it in plain English. And I've gone through my uh, book of John, the gospel of John, and highlighted everywhere that this term, I am the living God, which was ego emi, which was used by Jesus, a phrase that you and I, when we read it in the book of John, the gospel of John, we just see him say, I am. There are seven significant I ams that are spoken of in this book. There are nine absolute uses of the ego emi, which was a, 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 trend towards speaking back when the Lord uh, told 
uh, Moses, go to Pharaoh and tell him who sent you. And uh, he said, well, who was it? He said, tell him the I am. Those words were not just I am something. No, the I am, it was the statement about God. And throughout the Gospel of John, we find those those given very clearly and and particularly through their 50 Fifteen of those uh, ego emes come with a predicate, and uh, the nine come absolutely. But if you just went through this uh, first century Aramaic Bible in plain English and highlighted, as I have done, everywhere that John sticks in that phrase ego eme, which is a clear and direct statement that Jesus is saying. I am the living God. 24 times in my uh, little book here, that I, 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 it's a wonderful book, the comparative first century Aramaic Bible, and you go through the Gospel of John 24 times. That is in reference to Jesus or Jesus saying it about himself. I am the living God. In other words, do not be confused. Do not let it uh, somehow at all change your mindset on the idea of who Jesus is. Uh, I am the living God. In fact, John 8, 23 says, and he said unto them, ye are from beneath. I am from above. Ye are of this world I am not of this world. Now that I am there, it's different when it says it in the last of 23 of John 8. When it says, I am not of this world, he literally said, ego eme, which was the code word, the phrase that would be like an in-your-face statement to all of the people of that time who knew the ways and wisdom of God, that this was a word that would be more than just saying, I am. It would be saying the bold old, brazen, audacious statement, I am the living God. Be not confused on this July evening in 2024. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, he is the living God. Jesus is the one who is not of this world. Ye are from beneath, which means not hell. That just means you are from this earth. But I am not of this earth. Uh, Jesus said uh, before Abraham was, I am. In fact, when you read it out of this uh, edition of the Bible, it said before that Abraham had existence, I am the living God. Before Abraham had belonging, I am the living God. Jesus is my savior. Jesus is our soon coming king. And Jesus is the reason why we have hope in a world that is to come. Nothing can stop the living God who came to earth that we might have hope. I'm going to be a child of the king. I'm going to be a follower of his uh, way and his name. Jesus will be Lord at the cathedral. Jesus is Lord of my life. You get to decide, will Jesus be Lord of all? Will he be Lord of everything? Will you understand that when you say Jesus, you have said it all, that there is not salvation in any other name than in the name of Jesus? Ladies and gentlemen, let's know he is the God of our life. The Lord bless you.